Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kat and today I'm going to be talking through 23 books that I want to read in 2023. So obviously I know that it's getting towards the end of January now but we're just going to ignore that because I haven't done all of like the beginning of the year videos that I wanted to do by now and this is the one that I really wanted to film because I am so excited like beyond excited about all of the books on this list i think i've compiled such a good like yearly tbr so yeah from now on i'm not going to be doing any monthly tbrs i'm just going to be basically setting my intentions for the year because i never stick to monthly tbrs but i do feel like this is a kind of reasonable goal to set for myself although it sounds like a lot 23 books is definitely very manageable especially because a lot of these are very anticipated releases of mine they are definitely books that i'm going to get round to and to kind of hold myself accountable i decided to film this video and then also follow up at the end of the year and kind of check in with how I did. I've also kind of split these up into four different categories. The first category is new releases, so books that are being published in 2023. The second category are books that I own, books on these bookshelves that I am so excited for. The third category are series that I wish to continue, so series that I haven't finished yet and I've picked three series that I want to prioritise this year. I think every single one of them is the second book in the series. The final category is a group of books that I just didn't think I'd be including in a TBR to be honest. I'm not usually one for rereads but I just feel like this year I want to prioritise joy in my reading and I think a good way to do that is actually to reread some of your old favourites and there's definitely some really good books on that list that are kind of semi-recommendations as well. So yeah I absolutely love a blank slate, I love creating intentions for a new year so without further ado let me get into the 23 books that I would like to read this year. Starting with the first and probably most anticipated book on this list, that is Rouge by Mona Award coming out in September of this year. I think that's a US release date, so I'm not entirely sure that I'm actually going to be able to get my hands on this book this year. There's actually very limited information about this book so far. There isn't even a specific release date, it just says September on Goodreads. Luckily though, my friend Caitlin told me a little bit about the book. I don't think I'm actually supposed to know anything about it, so I'm not going to go into detail about what it's about or anything, but rest assured it sounds absolutely fantastic and I I cannot wait to read it. If it does come out this year, I'm definitely reading it this year, so that's why it's on this list. I feel like I'm kind of manifesting it to come out this year in the UK, although there's a very slim chance of that. So yeah, we'll see. So this next book is almost as exciting, and that is the next book coming out by Cassandra Clare. It's called Sword Catcher, that's the title, and it's her first adult fantasy. I feel like this has come at the perfect time. I am no longer really into YA. I think there's only one or two YA titles on this entire list. So yeah, I'm so excited to see what Cassie Clare does with an adult book. I've pre-ordered it already. I pre-ordered it as soon as I saw it. So it's about these two characters that cross paths in the underworld of the city they live in. One of them is a prince's body double. And then the other one is this girl from an outcasted community within the city who still practices magic and wants to like heal people. So they cross paths because of this failed assassination attempt. And that's pretty much all I know. So so yeah it sounds fantastic i don't think i've done it justice just then talking about it so definitely check out the synopsis if you haven't read it already i'll be linking all of these books below so definitely check it out Okay, so if that wasn't enough, I feel like we're being absolutely blessed this year because R.F. Kuang is coming out with another book and this time it is a literary thriller, which I absolutely love. This will be her first thriller that she's ever written. And yeah, I absolutely have the utmost faith in her to go into the genre. I think it's coming out in May, so not long to go, but still far away enough that I can keep reading her backlist. Yellow Face is essentially about a white writer who steals both the unwritten manuscript and the racial identity of an Asian author. And by the way, this author has just died. So nobody has any way of finding out that that's her book. It just sounds so interesting and I actually couldn't be more excited. It's another one that I've put on my pre-order list. So hopefully I get it as soon as it comes out. So this is the book that's already come out and that's The Stolen Air by Holly Black, or is it just Stolen Air? I feel like The Stolen Air sounds better because it's The Cruel Prince, The Wicked King the queen of nothing. I'm yet to pick this up yet, I'm yet to read it, but I am so glad that I basically binge read the Cruel Prince series, the Fog of the Eye trilogy in 2022, because now I'm all set and ready to read this next book. So this book is not in the same series, it's kind of like a side series, but it's the same world, same characters, and it features one of the main like most important side characters from that original series. I don't really want to give anything away from that series because I guess the end of that series follows on to The Stolen Air. So yeah I'm just gonna leave it at that but I'm incredibly intrigued to see where Holly Black takes this and I've been saying this whole time I just really want to read more in this world so I'm definitely going to be picking up How the King of Elfame Learned to Hate Stories, I think that's what it's called, and now The Stolen Air as well, I'm so excited. 
Another book that I pre-ordered ahead of time is Small Worlds by Caleb Azuma Nelson. I think he's pretty much an auto buy author for me now after reading Open Water and just absolutely falling in love with the way he uses language. I am just obsessed and I will read anything he writes, especially because I love books set in London. And this one also follows our main character, Stephen, who loves dance, who loves music. Anytime I hear a book that involves dance, I instantly want to read it. But yeah, we get to witness three summers in Stephen's life across London and Ghana, where Stephen basically searches for meaning, for his life meaning and purpose, but also for his relationship with his father who he feels like he's never really known. God Killer by Hannah Kainer is my next most anticipated book. I think its official release date was actually today while I'm filming this video, but I think it's been in bookshops a little bit longer than that. And I am so devastated, so upset with myself. I could actually cry. I don't know if that's a bit dramatic, but I missed out on pre-ordering a signed kind of like exclusive edition with Waterstones. It had the most gorgeous sprayed edges. The sprayed edges kind of carried on the cover design onto the pages and it was so beautiful. Like, I actually don't think I've ever seen a more stunning book. I just had to learn that I make mistakes in life and it's okay. But anyway, I'm hoping that the book itself is just as breathtaking as its cover. And I have a feeling that it will be just because I've heard nothing but good reviews. And basically this is a fantasy debut about a slayer of gods and a disillusioned knight who have to join forces to defeat an indestructible deity. So they're teaming up to kill a god essentially. And this premise definitely like gives me hints of Strange the Dreamer actually as well. But also medieval vibes with the whole night thing. Okay, so A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. I don't know much about this book. The synopsis is quite vague, but because it's a T. Kingfisher, I know that I have to read it. And it's the final book that I actually have pre-ordered on this list. It's basically a ghost story, haunted house kind of thing, but with the main theme being like twisted family secrets. The last book in the new releases category is of course Heartstopper Volume 5. We don't even have a cover for it yet, so I'm not going to put that on screen. But initially it did say that it was coming out on my birthday, which was February 2nd, but that's completely vanished off of Goodreads now, so I doubt that's happening. I just really hope, like with Rouge, that it comes out this year and that I'm not putting it on this list for no reason. We don't have any information apart from the fact that we all know that this is going to be the conclusion to the series. I know a lot of people are upset about that but I feel like it's a good time for me. I'm happy that it's ending. I just feel like I'm kind of past my heartstopper phase and I'm actually going to be really excited to read this when it comes out and like complete the series. Maybe eventually I'll reread the whole thing together as well. I think that would be really nice to do. So I'm actually going to be able to hold books in my hands now, which I prefer to do when I'm doing these sorts of videos. The first book on the list is Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. I fell in love with Melissa Broder's writing last year when I read The Pisces, so I'm definitely going to devote some quality time to reading this this year. This is about Rachel, who basically has made calorie restriction her religion. She's completely devoted to this eating disorder, but then she meets and quickly becomes obsessed with Miriam, who is intent upon feeding her. She becomes obsessed with Miriam's food, her body, her faith, and her family. So this is a book mainly about longing in different ways. It is somewhat of a lesbian romance, so I'm really excited to read that aspect of it. And also my friend Yasmin loved this book. I think she liked it even more than The Pisces. Oh my God, this is such a vibe with my outfit. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? So my intention was to read Babel at the end of 2022, but I had a major life slump and that kind of went out the window. I don't think I was in a good space to be reading. Such an intimidating read, but also something that I want to annotate, something that I really want to get my teeth into. Yeah, that was just completely the wrong time. And I'm so glad that I didn't end up reading it in a way because now I can pick it up when I'm actually really in the mood for it. And I have been side eyeing it for the last week. So that might be sooner rather than later. So this is a dark academia fantasy. It's set in early 19th century Oxford and it's about the violence of colonialism and also the power of language told through a Chinese orphan studying at Babel which is the Royal Institute of Translation. I don't think anything else needs to be said. I really love R.F. Kuang's writing and I'm just so excited for this to be the year of R.F. Kuang for me. This is the second time that she's popping up on this list and it won't be the last. <laughs> Okay, so this is the book that I'm actually really excited to read like this week. I think I might pick it up after this video. And that is The Other Black Girl by Zakiya Delilah Harris. This is simultaneously a gripping thriller and also a social commentary piece on the lack of representation within the publishing industry. So we follow Nella, who is the only black employee at this publishing house in New York. She's tired of the microaggressions and the feeling of loneliness she has at work until Hazel starts at the company and is working in the cubicle right next to her. Nella thinks that they could even become friends 
until a string of uncomfortable events leads to Nella being the most unlikable person at the company and she also starts to receive really mysterious notes demanding that she leave. Basically now that I've said that I want to read this very soon I give you guys permission to shout at me if I don't. I just realized this is the second book by T. Kingfisher on this list and that is The Hollow Places. The main thing that I know about this book is that it reminds a lot of people of Coraline. It's about our main character, Carrot. 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 <laughs> Oh my god, I can't. So Carrot finds this passageway at her uncle's museum, this hole in the wall that shouldn't exist, and this passageway leads to a strange and horrifying world that ends up haunting Carrot. <laughs> oh my god, surely, have I got that wrong? Like, is she actually called Carrot? I feel like somebody's taking the piss out of me because on the back it says Kara. I swear guys, I'm not making that up. Okay, I'll be right back. You guys thought I was joking, but I'm seriously not. On Waterstones, I kid you not, it says Carrot multiple times instead of Kara. <laughs> I really kind of want to read this as carrots now because i just i don't know why i love that name i feel like i'm gonna name my child carrot just like gwyneth paltrow named her child apple i actually can't like is that a practical joke on the waterstones website it compares it to pan's labyrinth which is a movie that i really have felt like watching recently so yeah i cannot wait to read this i just can't get over that that whole name thing the next book was a present from the lovely jan um, I'll link her channel below because she is fantastic and you guys need to check her out if you haven't already. But yeah, she gifted me this book for Christmas and we are hopefully going to either buddy read this one or the book that I gifted her, which was The Devil Makes Three by Tori Bovellino. So yeah, we're going to decide between these two. So the premise is, is that every year this road appears in the woods and it's haunted by the ghost of this girl. So it's been a year since Becca, the sister of our protagonist, has gone missing and Sarah thinks that she went in search of this ghost. So she kind of enlists some of her friends and they enter the woods a year later to find her missing sister. The thing is, when you enter these woods, you might not come out alive. I love a book with an element of like the paranormal or fantasy in our world and also combine that with like a deadly challenge, kind of like in Lonely Castle in the Mirror, which I read last year. It's kind of giving me similar vibes. So yeah, I hope I love this one just as much as I love that one. Yeah, now I'm going to talk about a couple of classics that are top priority for this year. So the first one I'm just going to briefly mention because I have talked about wanting to read this one a lot, especially during the autumn when I picked it up, and that is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I read The Canterville Ghost by Oscar Wilde in October, and now I'm really ready to read something a bit lengthier. I feel like the outfit today is just giving Dark Academia. Like, call me Dorian. The other classic that I'm so excited about is The Master and the Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. This, <laughs> I feel like could have a whole video to itself. It's probably my favorite of the Penguin Deluxe classics. So I picked this up recently, like at the beginning of this month. This is the 50th anniversary Penguin Deluxe classic edition. And I actually don't even know if Waterstone sells this anymore because I had a look after I bought this and I could not find anywhere that you could actually order it. But wow, this is like a new prize possession. I also do have another one that I picked up in Berlin before I saw this one. It does have a special place in my heart knowing when I got it, like it was such a good memory and it has the whole sticker on the back from the bookshop there. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna keep this. I feel like this will be my annotation copy if I decide I want to annotate it. And this will be like my copy for keeps and for like display purposes, I guess. They're giving very different vibes, but I like both of them quite a lot actually. So this is an allegory of Stalin's regime in Russia, which involves the devil coming to Moscow, wreaking havoc with his demons and his friends. I don't know if I'm clever enough for this just yet. We'll find out, I guess. I will vlog it. <laughs> So the only non-fiction book on this list is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. As the title suggests, this is kind of a demonstration in how you can live a healthier and happier life by living in the present moment. From what I've gathered, I think this book is about gaining acceptance of who you are now, as opposed to kind of always planning ahead. I am so critical of myself and hold myself to such a high standard. And half the time I'm cringing about what I did the day before. So yes, I think if this is what that book is about and I've kind of gathered that correctly, I think this is gonna be invaluable to me and my best friend's brother said that this changed his life.
Okay, time for the third category, which is carrying on in series. And I've got three books for this category and they're all the second books in their respective trilogies. So the first one is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. I told you guys she'd come up again and here she is. I haven't even finished The Poppy War yet, but once I inevitably do that, hopefully in the near future, I really want to pick this up in quick succession. I don't want to leave it too long before picking up the next book in a series because I know that that is my absolute downfall. So yeah, it seems like a no-brainer to put The Dragon Republic on this list. The Poppy War follows Rin. She's an orphan of the last Poppy War and lives in this like country town. She's basically being married off by her horrible step parents to this like much older man and she's only about 15 at this point. So she realizes her only chance of escape is to pass this countrywide test and to get into the top school in the country that pays their tuition for them. So if she doesn't get into the most elite school she won't be able to leave. So yeah that's kind of just the beginning of the book and I don't want to go into more detail about what the rest is about but obviously she gets involved in in war. It's called The Poppy War, it's quite obvious, but it is such a fantastic book and she's probably one of my favourite main characters now. So yeah, I can't wait to finish The Poppy War and start this one. The second book is The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien and I actually started reading this. I actually think I'm about a third to half of the way through but I was listening to the audiobook and I think that's just too lazy of me. I need to pick up the actual book because reading the first book physically brought me so much happiness and like peace and comfort and yes it was a little bit slow, a little bit long. I ended up actually giving it four stars which is I know very good but I know a lot of people think that's blasphemy for some reason. But anyway I just really want to carry on the series. I feel like finishing the series is a bucket list book goal for me. So yeah, I don't think it's asking too much to read this book this year. To be fair, it took me a whole year to read the first one, but this is much shorter and it's carrying on the story. So I feel like it's way easier to get into. And yeah, I just want to devote some time to actually sitting down and reading each book that I pick up this year. I feel like that's another major reading goal of mine to focus on each book when I'm reading them instead of thinking about the next book or my TBR or checklists or numbers or anything like that. I just need to leave that kind of thinking in the past. I think this is one of those books that I really want to savour and enjoy and focus on. The next book's not one that I have physically, it's a series I've been reading on my Kindle and that is The Raven King by Nora Sakovic. Again it's the second book in a trilogy and I read The Foxhole Court, the first book, very recently and just devoured that within a 48 hour readathon that I was doing. This series is about Neil Jostin whose mother is dead and whose father is in prison. He, for some reason that we don't know at the beginning, is kind of concealing his identity by dyeing his hair, wearing contacts, that kind of thing. And he's also on the run. He's keeping a very low profile until he gets scouted by the foxes to join the foxhole court to play this game called Exy, which is kind of a mixture between hockey and lacrosse. And it's so good. It's ridiculously good. It has gangs in it. It's very dark. It's kind of violent. But yeah, if you want to hear me talk about the first one in more detail, then you can check out my last video. And I gave all my kind of reactions and my final review of the Foxhole Court in that video. But yeah, because I enjoyed that one so much, I won't be too surprised if I end up finishing the whole trilogy within the first half of this year, just because I'm so into it. And I think I'll pick up the next book very soon. The last category in this video is for rereads. And like I said in the introduction, I don't tend to reread. I feel like I view it a little bit as a waste of time, which is just so silly because I could be getting so much joy if I just decided to sit down and dedicate some time to rereading one of my favourite books. The first one is Normal People by Sally Rooney. I've only ever listened to this in audiobook format and that was a couple of years ago now and I really really enjoyed it but I've never claimed this to be like one of my favourite books and I think the main thing preventing me from doing that is reading it physically. I just really want to consume this in a different way and see if I love it even more. But yeah if you didn't know this is a romance between Marianne and Connell, two young people living in Ireland and it spans over the years of when they're kind of at the end of their secondary school education to our after they finish university and the miscommunication that leads them to kind of drift apart, come back together again and again. It's a really beautiful story and I definitely connected very deeply with the character of Connell. I definitely saw a lot of myself in him. So yeah, I can definitely see this becoming like an all-time favourite with a reread. So I used to say that this was like my favourite classic of all time, but it's actually been years since I read it. I think eight years now. So I don't actually know if it's my favourite anymore and I feel like I need to read it to put that to the test. 
and that is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I definitely think I'm finally ready to read this again. I think I'm kind of mature enough and have aged enough to be reading this from a different perspective and I can't wait to see what I think of it this time round. Reading it for my A-levels definitely meant that it was a different reading experience for me because I obviously wasn't reading it to enjoy it, I was reading it to like dissect it and write essays about it and I still ended up loving it so I think doing it in that way made me appreciate the way and the reasons why Mary Shelley wrote it and everything that it represented at the time. But now I really would love to revisit it and read it just for fun. And yeah, like I said, hopefully with a whole new perspective. Oh my god, this is probably one of the oldest books that I own, and that is Aragon by Christopher Paolini. I'm so excited to say this out loud, but this year I would love to start reading this series again and hopefully see it through to the end this time. Last time I read these books, I only got as far as the second one, and I don't even think I finished that, but it is safe to say I was obsessed with this one. I ended up playing games online based on the book. It basically became my personality when I was like 13. So this book specifically is about a farm boy, Aragon, who discovers a dragon egg in the woods, and once the dragon hatches he forms a very special bond with the dragon and then this whole book is him embarking on this journey to become a dragon rider and dragons are very rare at this point in this world's history so Aragon and the dragon Sephira I think she's called ends up being hunted by the enemy. I'm so excited to reread this because it brought me so much joy when I was younger. I think I reread it quite a few times and you can kind of tell it's a tiny bit battered. I'm just thinking whether I should film a vlog series or like a whole big vlog reading The Inheritance Cycle. Let me know if you'd actually be interested in seeing those videos. Can you guess just from that colour? Like if you can, you're a super fan. Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This is the last book on this list, the 23rd book that I'll be talking about today. So the main reason that I originally wanted to reread this is just to refresh myself so I could go into Muse of Nightmares, being all caught up and like remember everything that happened in this because I did read it over two years ago now. I read it I think two years ago this month. But honestly the more I think about this the more I want to reread it just to get back into that world and see those characters again and feel all the same emotions because it is to this day one of my favourite books ever, hence why it's on my favourite shelf. It's about Laszlo Strange, he's a librarian, and he ends up embarking on this expedition to visit the lost city of Wheat, the place that he's been obsessing about since he was younger, and a place where gods reside. But yeah, I'm so excited to reread this. I got this beautiful edition last year, no regrets, it's one of my favourite books in my collection, and if I like Muse of Nightmares equally, I will try and hunt down a matching copy. Okay, so those are the 23 books that are on my top priority TBR for the year of 2023. I've enjoyed filming this video so much. It's just gotten me so much more excited about these books, talking about them with you guys. I'd love to know in the comments which ones you guys are excited to read out the new releases and also which ones you're excited to see me read as well. I would absolutely love to know if any of the books that I mentioned on this list are your personal favourites because then I'll probably bump them up and read them sooner. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye.